Hi everyone, we're here today with Roman and Blach from uh, Spletna Postaya, a very cool partner that we've been working with. Hi, how are you guys? Yeah, good, good, fine. Thanks. Fan Fantastic. So um, let's start with uh, a little bit about yourselves and the company, uh, maybe covering history and uh, what was like, what's your timeline? How did we get here? Cool. Uh, Bruno, thanks for, for pronouncing our uh, name. It's called actually Split Napostaya. It means, oh. <laughs> it's funny, it means web station, actually in Slovene language. But you know, we started in uh, our, um, our CEO's garage and uh, it was 20 years ago, actually. Like this year, we're celebrating 20 years. And uh, back then, you know, when you're starting something, it, it, it's interesting, you know, you never know it's going to get like bigger. So WebStation came with the name. And in the beginning, we were actually making uh, uh, websites for small businesses. And uh, in Slovenia, we are very known because we had our, we had one of the first uh, CMSs, so content editor um, for websites, and we did it ourselves. We didn't take any open source. And that's how we started. Uh, making um, uh, easy web pages and uh, because our uh, our, our co-founder was also uh, a programmer we, we we wanted to work on something more interesting so we slowly started uh, doing like custom web pages but uh, like in between in between 20 years today we're not working working on easy pages anymore uh, we do like uh, complex e-commerce websites uh, one of the hot stuff that we do right now is the B2B platforms for e-commerce and uh, we call it fancy corpo pages uh, for all over the world. Oh, so how, why did you, uh, like what inspired you to jump into this uh, digital service industry? Well, it was, uh, it, you know, in 2003, digital was very popular. It, it it was slowly evolving, evolving like, yeah. and became something hot. And uh, our founder back then wanted to do something with it because he saw some potential in digital, like <laughs> in, in the internet. Uh, and um, and actually, sorry, in 2003, there are almost no digital agencies um, on, on the market, on Slovenian market. I think mm -hmm. we were one of the first ones. Yeah, only a couple of big ones that really worked with high-end clients, but uh, we are the, one of the first ones that actually made it through the the smaller and, like, let's say, medium partners, medium clients. Cool. Well, so in term, what about the CMSs? How, what's, uh, what's the history here? I know you, you already had a lot of code and a lot of projects, so... Why did you decide to start, you know, working with October CMS? What other CMSs were you working with? Walk me through it. Okay, so until the until the I think 2015, 2016, um, we used our own PHP based framework solution with integrated CMS. So we called it Booster. Um, it was a catchy name and uh, I think it went along good with our clients. So, um, so our previous platform was entirely um, custom made and for years it supported our needs perfectly. However, the code base was huge and getting progressively harder to maintain. So, and some of the biggest, biggest technical challenges were um, that there was the, the, the platform that we were using, there was a, um, a huge legacy code base to maintain, you know, especially the core, uh, which included the framework and the CMS. Uh, it didn't use Composer. It was made on PHP 5.6, I think, at the beginning. Then we upgraded it to 7.0, uh, then to 7.1, to 7.3. Um, and then I think we stopped like, developing it. Uh, because we already started to use uh, uh, Laravel. So in 2015, 2016, right around the time that Laravel 5 was uh, um, coming out, um, we started working with it. And we just started playing around and and we made the uh, we made a few projects that were, that were like hybrids between the Laravel and our CMS. You know, we used the Laravel as a framework and the CMS 
our own own old CMS for the content management. And we created what three, four projects with it, and it wasn't good. <laughs> well, can I say something? Yeah. Actually, we are working on our old CMS, and uh, our lead dev hated the CMS. Really, he didn't even want to work on it, and he said he came to the uh, CEO and said either we are going on a new platform or I'm quitting, you know? And then they said, okay, you can try something. And then he made this hybrid. We worked on these three to four projects in between and uh, it was terrible actually, yeah. but it made a bridge from our X uh, CMS to October CMS. Yes. So it was, it was a part of our stores which we, we are not proud of. We still have like two sites on it, but we can't wait to go on the October. But it was actually a part how to how our story came to October. Yeah, but that's like uh, I think all those moments that uh, companies are not uh, super proud also are amazing learnings, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's critical. So how was the adaptation? Like uh, how did the team adapt to October? So, well, at the beginning, only our lead developer was starting to toy around with the idea of some other CMS. So, and we, we wanted the CMS to be um, open sourced at that time uh, because um, it was kind of getting important to our clients that they are not bound to, to us. You know what I mean? Like the, the limitation that uh, if we develop something for our client, then they have to stay with us because of the technology. Uh, we cannot give our technology to some other agency or company. So we started looking at open source CMSs and we tested about five or six of them at that time in 2016, 17. Um, and we, uh, of course, when we Googled it, like Laravel CMS, the October was one of the first hits. Uh, we tried it, we liked it. Then we 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 were uh, like analyzing it and uh, toying around with it and seeing the potential that it offers. You know, the, all the plugins, the modules that you can develop um, to to to, uh, to tailor your needs, to tailor your, the, our customers' needs. Um, so we we chose the October CMS and we started to working on some generic plugins. Our own, our own generic plugins uh, that we we knew that we need, like the the plugin uh, the for the news, you know, or for blog, but in general for news or news lists. Uh, this this was e and basket e-commerce uh, forms newsletter. newsletter plugins like that. But we we didn't want to use the the open source plugins on the marketplace because. They were really robust and um, not offering everything we needed. So uh, we developed our own. Um, and this just went great. It was, it was really awesome to work with it. It was easy to, to extend the, the, the October CMS uh, to our needs, to our customers' needs. Um, and then we just started producing some websites. At first, some simple ones. And then actually it was not, it was, it was in the beginning, it was hard because if, if you remember <laughs> our first project on October yeah. CMS was the hardest one. Okay, it was okay. like B2B e-commerce with everything <laughs> there is uh, to offer. And we struggled it. Like we had, yeah. we had, an, uh, we, we, we had uh, like a timeline that we should finish the project in a year. And I think it was like two and a half years. And uh, I think if the client's going to be listening to this, we like apologize for a million times, but he was the first one, <laughs> but we are proud of him just uh, to give us uh, the first bump, you know? It's, uh, and speeding up to, to today, do you feel that uh, working with uh, this, uh, having your own code and like being able to speed things up like you guys do right now and integrating with October, do you think that's a key differentiation between your company and others in the same space? How do you feel clients are these days in terms of being more or less receptive to different types of technology? Hmm. Well, um, first of all, you know, the digital in Slovenia goes through waves. Like in the beginning, they didn't care about technology. You know, whatever it is, you have CMS, great, it's okay. 
Then uh, the WordPress came out and everybody wants to have like open source because they didn't want to be stuck on one uh, agency. And uh, then later on, you saw that uh, no matter if you have custom programming, you know, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of technology you have in behind, because sooner or later, nobody is going to uh, be rewriting the other one's code. So actually, mm -hmm. at this time, open source is, uh, is, uh, is a better thing than uh, custom at the moment. But uh, I would say that uh, the companies are not looking into the tech part anymore that much, at least in Slovenia. Yeah. Maybe you can have like if there's a CTO from the company in the meeting, he wants to know what October CMS is and if we can show a demo or something. But uh, otherwise, people uh, like the clients want to know more about the, the whole story, not the technical part is actually a small one. Okay, interesting. So what about the client feedback? Have you... Obviously, because you have a lot of experience, do you, you, you have a lot of client feedback. Do you get to, uh, is it easy to, you know, for a client from obviously a user's perspective to use the system as it is, or are you constantly changing things and helping them like uh, make it easier? Um, well, I would say both because the, the, the general CMS is staying the same, you know, the, the, the October CMS, well, uh, unless we, we differentiate from the version one and version three, uh, which is, uh, uh, it's different. Um, but, um, the, the CMS is pretty intuitive and it, it looks pretty, you know, people, people like it because, um, they, they can see pages, news, products, everything st stuck on the menus. And with a few clicks, they are on their target on uh, the thing that they need to work on. And the, 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 the whole structure is, is, is really great. So um, I think the, the feedback from the clients is that the, about the technical part is that they, they just like to use it. Yeah, like, yeah, but you have to know we have the training for every client, yes. so we we have like our own instructions how to uh, how to use the CMS, and uh, it's easier for them. But I would again say it's a huge uh, gap from October one to October three, and it's a really big uh, thing for October uh, or for the client to be using like the number three, uh, the mm -hmm. version three. Sorry, it's like, easier. Like, yeah. like, and like, sorry, like Roman said, uh, we created our own video tutorials mm -hmm. about the CMS, which are kind of general, you know, a lot, uh, m most of the things are general, like 80% maybe. Um, so we can just share this with our clients. We, we show them, of course, on uh, live workshops, how to use the CMS. We send them our tutorials and then they just use it. We, we don't have not, not, we don't have a worry with them anymore about the content management. Yeah, but it's cool, you know, you can drag and drop now. Yeah. You can also front edit some easy yeah. stuff. And uh, if you show them the easiest parts first, it's, it's like, wow. Mm. Yeah. So um, what, let me take you, let's go back to that. Like uh, in terms of like your typical client, who would you say is like right there on the sweet spot, the client that you are going to add value for sure? Okay, so we have three main pillars. Uh, the first pillar is e-commerce. So uh, it's uh, usually uh, e-commerce that starts in Slovenia and then expands to other countries. In e-commerce, I would say the split Napastai, our agency is one of five uh, among the best in Slovenia. The second one is uh, uh, B2B e-commerce, so B2B platforms for e-commerce. We are here one of the two of the best in Slovenia and we, we really have the know-how and the product. So we made an October CMS as a product for B2B e-commerce. And the third one is the uh, fancy corporate pages, uh, corporate pages. Uh, and we have the luck to be working with one of the best Slovenian web designers. And uh, so we got a lot of design awards and mostly they are for uh, premium corporate pages, uh, exactly with the designer I mentioned. Okay. But so, so these are our three sweet spots. Interesting. Okay. So let's say I am uh, looking for a company like yours. Uh, how do you see people, do people find you like generically because they're looking for a solution or do you think they're tech oriented and they're looking for 
partners of, let's say, October implementing locally? Let's say in Slovenia, we, we don't even have marketing. We go by the word of mouth. The agency is 20 years old, so we have, we had, we have and had a lot of clients and uh, people know us as a developing company yes. with a uh, good design and we stick to what we promise. That's very important. Uh, and uh, I would say that this is uh, one of the most important things for our clients. Otherwise, um, would you add something? Um, yes, like um, I think we are very strong with integrations with other mm -hmm. systems, like the accounting programs, the warehouse programs, the uh, whatever you you give to us like the apis we can do it there's there's not a thing we can do so uh we're very proud of that and like roman said we are a development uh company we, more than half of us are developers uh so i think this is a, a like a big plus for us that uh, the the integrations part yeah i would say also another plus is that well, we had a partner in belgium which is now in canada canada and uh at the moment, uh, it's like a couple of years ago, like 40% of all our business was to uh, abroad. So what we do for the clients out of Slovenia. So we know how to work with the clients in homelands and also from abroad. Oh, okay. So in terms of client size, are you, do you guys take uh, a lot of startups, new projects, or is it usually like uh, bigger, mature companies? No, I would say I would say we were we were working with startups, but we are not um, really prepared. Our operations are not really prepared for startups. So the the best company is that uh, the company that's also has uh, like uh, that's that has been working for a couple of years, has some financial stuff, has the people who worked on the project, know a bit at least a bit about digital, and wants a prospect in digital world. So. In that kind of field, uh, we need clients that uh, are not startups, more or less. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can you walk me through, like, uh, I, I understand that the first implementation you had with October was challenging, but uh, can you walk me through, like, uh, something you would say it's a clear win, like a success client, like, uh, is it because they're with you for a long time? It's because they're bringing in a lot of other business it, like uh, if you had to highlight one project, like in terms of like generically speaking, that you find is a win, uh, do you have one in mind? What would you say? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> uh, like I, I would mention two of them. Like Dual, Dual, Dual dot SI is the world's leading manufacturer of air domes. And uh, this one was, uh, as a cooperative page, this was very special because it's in 17 languages, including Arabic, which is from right to left, the opposite of our normal Latin. And uh, 17 land languages to handle through one e-commerce, through one CMS, it could be interesting. Challenging. Challenging, yeah. And uh, we made it there. You know, also, what we are doing there is every year, we make a special landing page. So if you go to Dual's website, that's D-U-O-L, uh, you'll see the the sustainability web page that was also awarded as a best design for sustainability. And you'll see also a smart dome web page, uh, landing page, which was more of a technological, uh, technological look and feel with the dark mode and everything. And that's that's a good case for a cooperative page. If we mentioned the uh, all-in-one wonder, one of our biggest clients was UF Pro. UFPro.com, it's a, a tactical garment for professionals uh, mm -hmm. clothing. And uh, we started working with them back in 2014. They, their first e-commerce was with us. And um, now the latest is also on October. And we are doing for them like e-commerce global and uh, B2B and the corporate page. So we make the whole package for them. And at the moment, they're one of the biggest clients for them. I can also tell you about um, what's interesting is the number of uh, e-commerce. I don't know the people who are going to be looking uh, this video, but for Slovenia, that's nice number. So our biggest, uh, biggest e-commerce had like 1,900 uh, orders in one day. Our, uh, our, the other number is like we had in one day, more than 600,000 euros 
of orders for one company. And uh, the largest uh, B2B e-commerce right now has like 35,000 uh, products and 120,000 attributes. So we also were working uh, the one time with Belgium, yeah. with uh, e-commerce yeah. that have 5 million active users, and, uh, but it was a developing product. Interesting. Uh, I know you guys are very strong in B2B. Um, is this something that you feel that more and more clients are looking into from a, a digital perspective? Is it, uh, do you think it's a path that will, will keep see, seeing growth? Um, how do you see that going? Well, you see, B2B, B2C is all over the place. You have like Shopify, WooCommerce, everything. So it's very spread out and uh, people know about it. On the other side, B2B is like, I would say 10 years behind and they're still into Excel, mails, some of them in Slovenia and through faxes, but I hope that's gone for now. Uh, they also do a lot of uh, people uh, driving around and taking notes and stuff like that. But so what we saw through the Corona is that B2B part of the business digitalized uh, very, very fast. And uh, because, we were working on our first B2B e-commerce in 2009 with uh, Goodyear Sava, that's a tire factory. Uh, we had a lot of knowledge and we just went on this wave of uh, B2B e-commerce with uh, digital transformation and everything. So we had the knowledge, we had the technology and we had the people and operations to do it. And we'll just add to that that B2B platforms are really tailor-made for customers. For customers' needs, so uh, we, the developers in our company, really like B two B platforms the most. You know, <laughs> we love working on them because everything has to be like custom made. All the integrations are always somewhat different, although with some of the same systems. But um, it's pretty in interesting to work on them. So yeah, so absolutely. That's uh, so even re in regarding even to still to B2B and these integrations that you mentioned, uh, do you feel that uh, we're walking through uh, like, like the same way we did in B2C, like to a more standard uh, integration between the different platforms? Or do you still feel that customization will still be the, the big thing here? Well, we, we tried we tried like uh, generic stuff on the B2Bs, but the problem is that the business process for every company is different, you know, and it's you can't say you can't tell them the, the client you have to work without product in this and this and this way, you know, but because uh, nobody will take this. You have to uh, be like your the your your technology has to support the client's business process. And that's that's the main thing. And that's why I think. For the the bigger or the biggest clients, it's still going to be a lot of customization. You want there won't be a at least not soon uh, Shopify for B two B, at least okay, not for the yeah. bigger ones. Exactly. Okay, I will. I would like to also um, ask you to walk us through the partnership program because you are uh, our partners for a, a long time. Um, why did you decide to become partners with October CMS? Well, uh, fr from uh, my um, point of view, from the technical point of view, uh, the, there are several uh, benefits in being in partner program. Um, like we have the access to the private uh, GitHub repositories, uh, so we can be part of the devel development process. Um, uh, we have the support from the October development team uh, which we need to, when we need to, when we need to find a, a certain issue or, or a bug in the core, and we report it and, or make a pull request, and the problems are resolved in like no time, right? So this is one of the biggest benefits I think I should say in, so far. Uh, um, uh, so what else? We have unlimited licenses because we are in the partnership program. Um, which is uh, something that is mandatory for our type of business uh, because we have uh, m many, many clients. Um, and I would also say that like w when we had a client from bank industry, uh, mm -hmm. there was a question, uh, does October support banking? You know, do you have any reference from that field? And I asked the, the October guy, what was the name of the 
was I think it was Alexei. Alexei. Yeah, so I asked him to say, hey, can you help me? Uh, I need like a reference from October. And he sent me like a uh, banking uh, website from Germany that works in October. And that's also very helpful, helpful because in Slovenia, October is not that known yet. We are working a lot on uh, rec rec to be October to be recognized as a customizable CMS. But still, you know, the clients uh, ask around it. Okay. Uh, and how do you see, do you see that the partnership program could help you in other way? Because I understand that still the technology is not the main factor for clients to choose uh, uh, to work with you guys, because also you have a lot of strong uh, development team. So how do you, do you think like in terms of visibility, is there something we could do to keep pushing? Um, well, uh, right now we have a partner profile page on October yes. CMS that that is uh, kind of nice because we can show it to our clients and also a blog page also blog yeah um we have what like about two blog posts already on mm -hmm. October yeah and that's much easier because if you yeah. send a client that we are actually mentioned in the blog post of October yeah. it seems more serious yeah you know? so that was very and helpful. They, they can see that we are actually connected with, with the development team, with the whole October infrastructure and, and the whole organization. So uh, it's That's not cool. just some, some product that we use and make something else, but we, we, do, um, we do have a role in that. So our clients really like to see that. Yeah. What's also cool. Is it? Yeah. No, no, go, go ahead, sorry. You know, what would be also cool if we could more uh, be looking into the roadmap of October CMS, right? To see yeah, what's going yeah, on in yeah. the future. Yeah, yeah. That's a great tip. Um, in terms of case studies, do you guys produce a lot of case studies? Well, <laughs> that's a part of marketing that's been on hold. Like if my colleague was here, she would say, uh, I had a case study. My case study was done like back uh, one year and a half ago, and we still, we still didn't publish it. But mm -hmm. uh, now... Uh, we are trying to uh, make case studies now. So till the end of the year, there'll be a couple of case studies because we really have nice numbers, cool clients and uh, special uh, customizable things that we did on the projects. Exactly, that's exactly what I was asking because you guys have a lot of great work and uh, the references, people reference you all the time. So I was wondering that this should, you know, like reach more people and more people should know. Yeah, Bruno, but in the beginning, you know, it's going to be in Slovenian. So either you learn or you can go <laughs> translate it. That's a, exactly. <laughs> no, then I'll be, I would be able to, I would be able to say your name much better. So maybe it's a good, <laughs> <laughs> it's a push in the right direction. Amazing guys. Um, so. Lastly, if uh, anyone listening to this would like to reach out to you guys, what would be the best way? I would say go to splitnapostai.com, uh, uh, give us a, a call or email or however you can get in co contact through LinkedIn also. As a company, as a person, Roman Krušić, uh, you can contact, get in touch with us and uh, we'll see if we, how can we help you out. Fantastic. This has been super great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, we trust you as a very like uh, intimate partner. So I hope that this lasts for a lot of years. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us, Bruno. It's been a nice chat. Thanks. And uh, let's get uh, together again sometime. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you, Bruno.